got one. What's up guys, my name is Michael Coleman. I'm with Fishing with Michael and today we're out here on this river getting some early coho. There's a lot of jacks in here right now. Just got this one. Been here for like 30 minutes. So hopefully we can get out there and catch some more. So here I am explaining what I am using to catch these fish. Um, so to start out with the rod, I'm using an Okuma Guide Select Pro 10 foot 6, 8 to 17 pound line rating rod. And the reel I'm using is a P Fluger Tryon 3500 series. And I have 40 pound high vis power po braid. That's important because the braid floats. And then on my braid, the first thing I have is a thread bobber stop, and then a little tiny bead. And then I have a corky that'll indicate if my bobber's fishing correctly. And then my bobber, it is an arrow float, 5 8 ounce float. And then below that, I have one more bead to protect the knot. And then I have a 5 8 ounce inline weight to counteract the buoyancy of the bobber. And then I have four feet of 15 pound mono with two split shot in the middle. And then I have a eight millimeter bead and then egg loop on an owner octopus hook size two. And then that is a spawn sack I tied up with some loose salmon row that I cured up. And that is the rig I am using to catch these coho salmon. You're kidding. I completely missed that bobber down. Got one. Oh, he, oh, I thought he just popped off. Oh, he snagged. What the heck? Oh. How the frick did I snag one with a bobber? What the frick? I just snagged one with a bobber. With, with a bobber? How did I do that? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Got one. <laughs> hey Mike, that's what a jack looks like. <laughs> yeah, you catch small fish, I catch big fish. No, you catch no fish. Where's the fish at, buddy? Hey. Get you on a stringer. No bite on the day. At all. So once you lay down the stream. There you go.
All right, so here's the bounty for the day. Four decent coho jacks. One shy of a limit, but uh, the bike kind of died. So I'm gonna gut one of them real quick, just to show you how. There we go. We just go all the way up the stomach. Right here. There's all the guts. Just grab them, pull them out. Try not to do what I did and puncture the gallbladder. So that can make it taste a little fishy if you get it on the flesh. It'll be green when it comes out. So that's how you'll know you punctured it. I'm gonna grab these, pull these out, grab some of the gills, pull those out, and then take your knife and cut up the kidney right here, this black line. And then you're going to just scrape your knife right across the kidney, and you're just gonna scrape out all the all that kidney stuff and the blood just clean it out all right so there you have it One basically clean, ready to fillet fish. All right, so again, the audio stopped working. So here I'm going to show you guys how to fillet these fish. It's like the easiest way, it's foolproof. Once you get the hang of it after like filleting a couple of fish, you'll be able to fillet any similar fish. We will start with the smallest one. We're just gonna put it right here. We're gonna lift up this little, I already gutted it, took out most of the gills, took out all the bloodline. So all we need to do now is just fillet it. So I'm gonna pull this up. I'm gonna cut diagonally down to the head. And cut that up, get the fin off. Make sure it's all the way down to the down to the spine, and then flip the blade, going parallel to the backbone. You can see my blade right here, that it is right on that backbone. I'm holding the blade kind of at a down angle and pushing down. Make sure to get all the meat off the backbone. I'm just gonna saw back and forth, keeping pressure down to get all that meat. And then just cut right through. There we go. There's one good fillet right there. And what we're going to do is flip this over and do the exact same thing. Cut down to the spine. Flip the blade. Keep down pressure. And just... Go across the backbone. Flip it over. And there's another good fillet. We'll still have to get all the bones out. Take the carcass. So now all you have to do Let's just do some trimming. Get behind these rib bones, just like this, and just scrape as much meat as you can off of it.
I'm gonna get rid of the belly meat. Get rid of this fin right here. We'll clean the scales off later. Right now we'll just worry about getting all the bones out. All right, all right, last filet. And before I finish this, I'm just gonna show you, tell you guys what I'm using. This is the Gerber filet knife. Um, I think it's the eight inch one. Uh, if you just, I forgot like the actual name, but if you just look up Gerber Filet Knife, it'll come up. And then this is a Filet Away Fish Mat. It, uh, it helps keep the fish stable and it won't slide around as much as it would if you used like a normal Filet Mat or Filet Board. So those are the things I am using right now. And the Gerber Filet Knife is special and extra cool because it comes with this case with a honing rod on it. And it keeps your blade sharp. Or eight fillets. I'm gonna rinse these off, and dry them off, get all the scales and slime off, and then we'll be ready to package them. All right, rinse these off, and then dry them off. One. Yeah. Get these all dried up. Once they're dry or not soaking wet, we'll put them in a bag and save them for when we're gonna cook them. All right, so the way you wanna package this is you wanna put it skin on skin or meat on meat. You don't wanna put skin touching meat because then scales are gonna get onto the meat and you're gonna to have to wash it again. So you always wanna put skin against skin or meat against meat. There you go. There's four Jack Coho filleted and prepared, ready for you to cook them. Put them in the fridge, and that will be good for like two days until you want to cook it. Hey everybody, thank you for watching. Hopefully I taught you something. Hopefully I inspired you to get out in the water. See you next time, and always fish on.